Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllerieTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at halogen disproportionation reactions and we're also going to look at the uses of chlorine as well. So we're going to start with looking at what disproportionation is. Disproportionation is effectively the um, simultaneous reduction and oxidation of a halogen and in this case we're going to uh, mainly focus on chlorine but it can be applied to other uh, halogens as well. So we're going to start with and this reaction here. So this is a reaction where we take chlorine uh, and we're going to add it to water. So we're going to push it through water. Now this reaction does undergo a disproportionation reaction and I'm going to show you why. Chlorine as a halogen is um, uh, has an oxidation state of zero um, because it's an element. But if we come over here uh, and work out the oxidation state or oxidation number of chlorine over here, um, we can see that actually oxygen um, is minus two and uh, your hydrogen is plus one. So that must leave, being the molecule being neutral, uh, that must mean that your chlorine is actually um, plus one in this state here, because we've worked it out from the other ones. So that's the key one that we're going to look at there. Uh, and then the chlorine in this HCl, hydrogen is plus one and chlorine is minus one. So you can see that actually what's happened here is our um, chlorine has been simultaneously oxidized there and it's also been reduced. Now if I show it here, so oops, goes to the chlorine, so that means it's been reduced. But it's the same chlorine, this one here, that has been oxidized and reduced at the same time. We call that a disproportionation reaction. Now, um, if you're not sure on oxidation numbers or how to work out the oxidation states, um, there is a video that looks into that. So if you just click on the link below, uh, you can have a look at that there. But I've just put a brief summary on here. And basically, oxidation is where we have an increase in oxidation number, like going from here to here. So that's oxidation. And reduction is where we have a decrease in oxidation number. Now, chlorine is obviously used in a lot of uh, a lot of different things in society. So, for example, we can use it to kill bacteria in water, as with fluoride as well, that's added in there as well. Um, it's used in swimming pools a lot, um, obviously, to kill off bacteria uh, in a public bath um, and even in uh, private pools as well. And it's used to make bleach as well. I'm going to look at um, kind of all three of them, really. Okay, so these two kind of come into uh, come in together quite closely. Small amounts of chlorine are added to water, uh, and it was very useful because, especially after the cholera epidemic in London um, um, years and years ago, well over 100 years ago, and then uh, they added chlorine to water and it found that actually adding that chlorine actually kills the bacteria and stops a lot of the waterborne diseases that we obviously don't get for granted today. And um, it's also used in swimming pools. So one of the things we can do is we can physically take chlorine gas, which is Cl2, and bubble that through water and we form this which is um, HClO, uh, or chlorate acid, um, which is ClO here, uh, and then it'll form HCl as well. Now, the problem is, is that when this reaction occurs, this is the thing that uh, actually kills the bacteria. This is a uh, oxidizer's very good oxidizing agent, uh, HClO, and that actually kills the bacteria in the pool. Um, but the problem is, is that actually um, in the swimming pool itself, if you have sunlight, the sunlight will actually start to break down uh, the chlorine in the water and it will form HCl and O2. Now, if you get rid of these two here, then effectively you don't get much of this. And if you don't get a lot of that, then you don't have, um, you're not going to have the ability to oxidize your, um, uh, your bacteria and kill them off. So, um, especially in shallow pools where obviously there's um, there's not as much water and the sunlight can get to it as um, can get to it quite readily, then uh, you generally find you have to replace the chlorine treatment quite often um, because of this reaction that occurs here to do with UV light. Um, so a way around that, what you could do is instead of using pure chlorine, which can be very difficult to handle, it's obviously very toxic and it's a gas, so it's not easy to use, and um, you can use a solid. Um, salt form, which is um, sodium chlorate, which is this here, NaClO, and you can dissolve that into water, and actually that will still make the HClO, and this is the active ingredient that you need to oxidize your um, to oxidize your halogen, uh, to oxidize your bacteria. Sorry. So, um, but the problem is, is that if this becomes very um, uh, basic, 
then um, effectively what happens is equilibrium will shift to the left and you don't actually get much HClO. So to move this thing further over to the right, equilibrium to the right, then actually the water is very slightly acidic, uh, and that's the, uh, the swimming pool water, and that means that it pushes equilibrium to the right-hand side to remove that acidity. Obviously, it will uh, form HClO instead and go to the basic side. Uh, and so that means that um, swimming pool water is actually slightly acidic, but it's a way in which um, you can get a very cheap source of chlorine easily accessible, easy to handle, uh, and you get your uh, active ingredient to kill off the bacteria as well. Now, um, there's one other use for it, which is used to make bleach as well. Um, and this is the reaction with sodium hydroxide. So if you take chlorine gas, again, uh, and you react that with um, sodium hydroxide solution, like I've written down here, actually what you make is sodium chlorate, which is this substance here. Um, and that is effectively your bleach. And that's the active ingredient that you'll find in your um, household bleach, such as Domestos and uh, supermarket-owned brands, etc., if it's chlorine-based. Uh, and that will form sodium chloride and water. But you can see that this effectively can be used and dissolved in water and uh, is dissolved in swimming pools. So effectively, it's bleach that they put into the swimming pool, albeit in very, very, very small quantities. Um, but that's why generally when you, if you swallow bath water, you feel this like sickly feel uh, and your eyes normally go a bit red as well, uh, mainly because of the irritation of the small amount of bleach that's put in there. Um, but it does have its uses and you do need to know these reactions as well and how they can be applied. Uh, it's very how science works. Uh, just make sure you know them. That's it. Bye.